which booktuber schedules a video to go live on World Book Day and forgets to wish everyone a happy World Book Day? Me! It does give me a chance to show you this bookish jumper, which I'm loving. Read more books, because books are brilliant. I hope you have a lovely World Book Day, wherever in the world you are, and whatever you're reading, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, happy World Book Day. Here's a book haul, because books are brilliant, and so are neon leopard print jumpers. Hi and welcome to my channel, I'm Simon and today I'm back with my February book haul part two. I know it's March, it's actually March 3rd and me and Chris's wedding anniversary as I record this, three years, is why I'm slightly dolled up. I'm dressed up for a night in. Anyway, I'm waffling. Um, as always, these are the books sent from publishers and also the books that I bought myself. I have been gifted some from my birthday wish list, which is linked down below, but I'm gonna save those until after my birthday. Anyway, right, let's get on with these books. So first up, two republished series, and the first of which is the three books by um, Tsitsi Dangaremga, um, which are Nervous Conditions, The Book of Not, and also This Mournable Body. This was up for the Booker last year and I didn't read it because it was the third in a trilogy and I wanted to read the others and I knew that at some point Faber were gonna be re-releasing them. They are now here, they are gorgeous and they also featured in my books that I'm most excited about in March video, which I'll link down below if you want to go and see that. Um, they follow, um, Tambudzai as Zimbabwe heads to independence and then I think gets independence and all the fallout from that. So I'm really, really looking forward to to those nervous conditions I think I will head to within March is my aim. Then we have a trilogy that I hadn't heard about before, um, which is the Balkland trilogy um, by Olivia Manning, but I've heard amazing things since I found out about them and was asked if I would like a set. We have the first, which is set in 1939, and um, these all follow Guy and Harriet um, and Young Love and and all that in the uncertainty of war. That's how this one's depicted. Anyway, so we have Great Fortune, which is the first, The Spoiled City, which is the second, and Friends and Heroes, which is the third. These are gorgeous, um, as are these. There's something going on with the way they've done these. I just love the different colours. Anyway, very excited for all of these and looking forward to uh, dipping into both and seeing how I get on. I like the idea of sort of having some series to get into. That said, I might do a video at some point about series that I'm already reading that I've just sort of trailed off from reading and need to get back into. I don't know if that would interest all of you or not. Also republished uh, is Shirley Jackson's Raising Demons, which is a memoir of her raising her children, who she called her demons. And uh, this is out in time for Mother's Day. I wonder why. I love that cover so much and I have actually got a copy of this for my mum. I also really love Shirley Jackson and um, haven't read her for ages and would like to read more. She's one of those authors who I've read, really enjoyed and so I've collected a lot of her works and just not got around to so uh, yeah I want to head to those. I think the first of her memoirs is called Life Among the Savages which seems very apt and I should read that very soon frankly. One of my favourite books this year so far has been In the End It Was All About Love by Musa Okwonga and I have his new uh, non-fiction one of them, an Eton College memoir. And it's something that I'm realising, um, I should say, Musa is bisexual. And something that I've recently noticed in some of the LGBTQIA plus nonfiction that I've read is this sort of um, conversation around internalised homophobia and also hiding your homosexuality and so wanting to be um, the best at everything study-wise and academically. And um, yeah, that really, really intrigues me. And I think this is gonna be it, but also what it's like to be a black man going to Eton College. So I'm really, really intrigued for this. It's from um, Unbound and will be out in April. I'm so excited that I found Moose's writing this year because I just think it is phenomenal and I've become an absolute ardent fan of him. I know that Hannah over Let's Talk About Books Baby is also a huge, huge fan. So um, yeah, really, really looking forward to getting to this. Well, looking forward to getting to all of them because that's why they're still here. Because I don't keep everything that comes in the house and I only select a certain amount of them for these hauls, I should say. Excitingly, Brandon Taylor's short story collection, Filthy Animals, has arrived. I don't know what to expect about this, but I loved real life. So I'm really, really looking forward to getting to this one. It's out in June. I meant to read this author's second non-fiction book and didn't get around to it. So I've got much joy ahead from Susan O'Sullivan. And this sounds brilliant. It's The Sleeping Beauties and Other Stories of Mystery Illness. Now, for those of you who don't know, I have a condition called Durkham's, which is a very, very, very rare condition. It's a chronic illness. Chronic illness is not something, I'm going to be really honest, that I have read that much into because I've only been diagnosed in the last, what, 
four or five years, or certainly within the last eight. It's something that I'm still getting to grips with myself. And so sometimes I've shied away from reading about what it's like to have chronic illnesses. Actually, I was sent a proof of a book that's about somebody who's about to turn 40 and gets a chronic illness. And I was like, that's too close to the bone. I can't read that right now. Even though, like I said, I know that I've had Durkin's for a while. I'm still getting used to it. Um, but this looks at lots of different mystery illnesses and... Um, I think this is one I'm going to go in with because I think it's going to be a whole host of different um, conditions. But also, Susan Sullivan writes really, really brilliantly. Um, she won the Welcome Prize a few years ago and I had the pleasure of interviewing her then. This is out in April from Picador. A book that uh, may well be a choice that gets a lot of discussion in a month or two's time there's a teaser, is Jackie Kay's Bessie Smith. I'd never heard of Bessie Smith before, but apparently she was a singer, an icon and a pioneer. And Jackie Kay has written this, I believe it's a mixture of uh, non-fiction, some memoir of hers, but also some biography and also snippets of fiction and all sorts of things in this book. I'm really, really, really intrigued by it and um, looking to uh, read, looking forward to reading it in um, due course because it does sound, when I looked at the blurb about it, it does sound like Bessie Smith was incredible and had quite an incredible life. So yeah, looking forward to heading to that one. As I Am, A Hundred Boyfriends by Brontes Purnell, which Cypher Press are publishing here in the UK. It's short stories, apparently they're very, um, on the back it's described as a horny punk love song full of imperfect intimacies, which just sounds brilliant so I'm hoping to head to this very very soon I think this might be one that I read on my birthday week when I've decided that um, I'm just going to read whatever I really really fancy that week just by whim but but not just like not just by whim no it is by whim oh gosh I'm having an argument with myself enjoy I want to head to books that I'm just really excited about at the time and not do that putting them off for a rainy day this book I'm so excited about um, and it's not the sort of thing that I would normally read but I saw it on Big Door's site and asked if I could have a proof and they kindly sent me one sorry I think one of Oscar's hairs has gone up my nose and it's really bothering me Anyway, this is The Book of Difficult Fruit by Kate Lebo and it's arguments for the tart, tender and unruly. And it goes through an alphabet um, of these fruits that are not very well known, including, and the one that really, really kind of stuck out to me was medlar fruit, which is also known as dog's anus. Now, <laughs> there's a reason I know of medlar fruit, which is gonna sound so unromantic now that I've said that, but I got Chris a medlar tree for Christmas because he really, really, really wanted one. And the fruit are quite striking, but once you know that they're called dog's anus fruit, you can kind of see why. Anyway, this book goes to that. It's got recipes, it's got all sorts of things in it. And I think it's a book that I'm gonna really enjoy it, and I think Chris will really, really love. So I'm hoping that he's going to give it a whirl either before me or after me. We'll see. Um, but yeah, very, very excited for that one. As I am, Keith Ridgway's A Shock. Now, I absolutely loved Hawthorne and Child. And I went back and read, I want to say it's called Falling Apart, but that's not right. I will put what it's called underneath here. It was a very still novel about Island, whereas Hawthorne and Child was sort of a very gritty, dark look at sexuality and police and all these things. I don't know what a shock is about. I want it to be a shock when I read it. I just know that I'm desperate to because I loved Hawthorne and Child so much. This is out in June from the lovely folk of Picador. Actually, this is all part of a lovely parcel that Picador sent me, of which the other one is Of Women and Salt by Gabriella Garcia, which Elizabeth McNeil highly, highly, highly recommended to me. I'm desperate to get to this one soon, as I am Elizabeth McNeil's second book, actually. I need to read that soon. Maybe that's going to be another book for my birthday treat week. Um, and the other one that I asked for was The Office of Historical Corrections by Daniel Evans. I've heard amazing things about this short story collection, including from Emma over at Drinking By My Shelf, who um, doesn't normally like short stories and absolutely loved them, um, these ones. I always think if someone who doesn't like short stories really loves a collection, that's a really good sign. So I'm even more excited about it as I do like short story collections. I'm wondering if it's gonna be about correcting historical moments. I don't know, we'll see. We'll find out when we read it. Two books that came from the lovely folk at um, John Murray's are Black Book, which is another book that I've seen, uh, sorry, I should say by um, Matteo Ascaripal. I've seen a lot about this on uh, Instagram and on some of the booktubes I follow in America already. It's getting a lot of buzz there. And um, on the back it says, sales is as American as slavery and America is long overdue a new salesman. And I think it looks at this um, young man, who, young black man who who was working in Starbucks and is really happy with his lot until he gets taken in by this company where he becomes a salesman. And I think 
becomes sort of this um, entrepreneur and possibly it goes a bit wrong. I'm not quite sure, basically. I'm making it up, frankly. I've heard amazing things, okay? So when they emailed me and said, would you like it? I said, yes, please. But also, could I please have... Oh, can't get it. The Rules of Revelation by Lisa McInerney. Lisa McInerney won the Women's Prize for the Glorious Heresies, which I really, really liked. And I am judging the Desmond Elliott Prize with her this year. So I thought, oh, it'd be really nice before I start reading those to read her latest and um, see how I got on with it. So I'm really, really looking forward to that. A book that I've seen doing the rounds on four of my favourite booktube channels is Fake Accounts by Lauren Euler. I've seen this uh, discussed by CJ Reads, GK Reads, The Bar and the Bookcase, Let's Talk About Books Baby, and they've all had really interesting thoughts on it. And I have been, well, they've all won me over to it because I requested a copy of this from the lovely folk at Fourth Estate. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really looking forward to this. This could be eligible for the Women's Prize, actually, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's on it. I feel like um, it's in the vein, well, from what I gather, it's about a woman who uh, her partner leaves his phone open and it turns out that he's like working for some dodgy social media thing vague and um, but I've heard it's much more than that and I think this might be along the lines of that sort of Patricia um, Lockwood kind of vibe where authors are writing about social media and the pros and cons of it and all those kind of things and sort of what that says about the world now and where we are in this sort of state. So yeah, I'm intrigued for it. And uh, yeah, we'll head to that one soon. Very excited as I've got a boarding pass, which means I can now fly to Australia, apparently. Thanks very much to the lovely folk at Sphere and Claire McIntosh. This is her new thriller, Hostage, which is set, and this actually does terrify me because I don't love books set on boats, but I don't mind being on a boat. It's a bit weird, whereas I don't like being on plane. I don't mind the takeoff and I don't mind the landing, oddly the most dangerous bits. I hate the bit in the middle because you're just stuck in a tin can at a stupid amount of thousand feet above the sky and who knows what could happen. Ugh, but ooh, at the same time as I feel about this one, so I'll be heading to that soon. A book that I did not mention in my Women's Prize predictions video, which I'll link down below because there's less than a week to go until the Women's Prize long list is announced, um, is Transcendent Kingdom by Yar Gassi. I wasn't a huge fan of Homegoing. I think I read it at the wrong time though, um, and actually ended up doing it. Doing, yeah, I don't know what I was doing there. I ended up doing, <laughs> can't do it. I ended up DNFing it because it just wasn't holding me as much as I wanted to. And it might be because it was so hyped at the time that was part of it. But um, yeah, I'm intrigued to get to it. And I do love this colour combination, which could almost go with this. Finally, from publishers that I haven't talked about before is Superhost by Kate Russo, which I saw on CJ Reed's channel. I'll link her channel down below. If you're not watching her channel, you really, really should be. I think I've linked to Hannah and Grace and Jaden before, but if I haven't, I'll link them all down below anyway. It's always nice to support other booktubers. So it's about an artist who um, has sort of faded from the forefront of culture and sort of being an absolutely loved darling, who is now struggling and so moves out of the house they have in London into the shed and rents the house out. And it's the relationship they start to have with the people who rent. I think it could get a little bit creepy. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. So it says, being lost in a place you know by heart is one of life's most disconcerting feelings. Maybe it's not, maybe it's more about mental health then. We'll see when I eventually read it. Also potentially eligible for the women's prize. Now, the final three books from publishers I have mentioned before. These are finished copies, so I'm not gonna talk about them in too much detail. First up, Memorial by Brian Washington. I'm actually currently reading this at the moment, but I'm reading the proof so that I can keep this nice and lovely and fresh. Um, interesting reading about a queer couple who are in love, but are beginning to question their love on my third wedding anniversary. Don't know what that's about, but we'll see. Um, then we have Unsettled Ground by Claire Fuller. Claire Fuller is an author who I have all of her books um, because I think I'm going to absolutely love her writing, but I've still yet to read one. I read a couple of chapters for this for a video that no one will ever see. Well, my patrons might see it actually. It's about siblings who are in their sort of middle aged years and they have been living with their mum in this sort of house that's becoming really decrepit. She's just died and now it's how do they fend for themselves afterwards. So yes. And also how the one armed sister sweeps her house by Cherie Jones. I asked in my last video for you guys to vote between four books, which you thought was the most me. This was the winner, hands down, that's now closed. I will be reading this next. There's a reason why I've been getting um, different uh, platforms to pick the most 
the book, sorry, that they think is the most me from four, which you will see in a reading vlog next week, or it'll go live next week. I'm currently filming it right now. On to books that I bought myself. First up, My Dark Vanessa, which is, um, sorry, by Kate Elizabeth Russell, which is me and Melanie's next book club choice. This looks at consent in a very different way from what I've gathered. I haven't read it yet, but I need to read it soon. I think a young woman who had an, or a, a woman who, when she was younger, had a relationship with her teacher. She saw it as being consensual, but obviously society doesn't. And when he gets arrested for doing the same thing again, she is drawn into it. And I think it's going to make the reader look quite uncomfortably at that whole thing around consent. So intriguing. I have heard amazing things about Kwai Quarty's um, crime fiction, and this sounded quite different from what I'm used to. So I thought, right, I need to read it then because I want to sort of branch out in the stuff that I'm reading. That said, this is the beginning of another series and I need to also crack on, as I mentioned earlier, with series, with series, with series that I've already started. This is set in um, Accra in Ghana where an American goes missing and um, the father of this American is not really happy with how the police are dealing with it, so hires a private detective who is called... Emma Jan, and this is the beginning, I think, of the Emma Jan series. I saw the second, or the sequel, to this, and the second in the series, on so many most anticipated um, lists for books by authors of colour, that I thought, right, I'm going to head to the first of that series and see how I get on. I believe there's another series too, so lots to, lots to be getting on with. Um, I got myself What's the Tea by Juno Dawson. I adore Juno, I think she's fantastic, and Whilst this is um, aimed at younger readers, I don't know enough and I would like to inform myself even more so that I can be an even better ally. So that is why I got my mitts on that. Plus, I will read anything Juno writes. I have reminded myself, though, that I actually dared Juno to write a horror novel. Said, oh, I just think it's really hard to do a horror novel in contemporary times. And Juno wrote that years ago and I still haven't read it. And that's awful because I'm even acknowledging the back. So that shows what a rubbish friend I can be. And that's something I've been thinking about later. I need to be better at things like that. So that needs to go higher up my TBR. Although I feel like I want to read that this Halloween. So I'm definitely going to read it at Halloween if I don't read it before. But I also desperately want to read it this before then because my brain needs Juno's knowledge frankly. Um, I am slightly obsessed with a long list for a prize that um, I've sort of paid attention to, to before, but this year's long list was so good. I was like, oh, and that's the Dylan Thomas prize. And um, I've got a few of them already, but I've decided to treat myself to a few of the long lists as I go. I haven't quite decided whether I'm going to try and read the long list or not. It has crossed my mind. Um, but um, one of them was Will Harris's Rendang. And I thought, oh, as that's poetry, that's um, nice and slight. I can definitely get through that. Um, so yeah, I'm going to sort of unofficially read some of the long list books by whim as I go over the next few weeks, maybe. The Bone Readers by Jacob Ross. I thought I had this on my shelves. I don't. This is a crime series. It's now become a series. So yeah, I'm beginning to get some new series. So I need to crack on with the ones that I've already started. This is uh, the start of a series of crime novels set in the Caribbean. And uh, I want to read a lot more Caribbean literature this year. And so headed to this. Now I wasn't bothered by this book that much when it came out in hardback to the point where I actually gave the proof and the hardback away and so I had to buy myself the paperback and I was like actually this book is beginning to really intrigue me because I'm hearing a lot of good things from a lot of lovely people and that's Writers and Lovers by Lily King. Now I think this is about a woman who ends up struggling to choose between one of two men who she meets and um, building a relationship with them. But yeah, I again wouldn't be surprised if we see this on the Women's Prize um, long list. How many times can I mention that long list in this video? Can you tell that I'm excited about it? Because I really, really am. I think it was Noelle who really, really tempted me to read this one when she talks about it. And uh, yeah, so I uh, ordered it. And I should say all the books that I've bought myself have either come from Waterstones or bookshop.org, just so you know. Um, then we have, and this is an author that I've not read for ages, and I think I've, there's a quote of mine in one of her previous novels called Shame, because I really, really loved it. So why I've not headed to this sooner, I do not know. This is The Underneath by Melanie Finn, who has a new stunning book out, which has got this most gorgeous floral cover. But I thought, no, I shouldn't head to that because I haven't read this one yet. And this sounds like it's a mixture of sort of, I think it's a literary thriller, basically. Um, and I just love that gothic cover. So as soon as I saw that, after I'd seen the beautiful floral, which I also really, really wanted, um, 
I thought, right, I'm going to get my mitts on this. Another book that I got was one of Matthew Sharapa's favourite books of last year. And again, I suddenly realised, I think this is, could be eligible for um, the Women's Prize Longlist too. And this is Lot by Shola von Reinhold from Jacaranda Press, who I would like to read a lot more books by and don't have enough of. I can't exactly quote Matthew's thoughts on it but it was along the lines of this being kind of a book that reads like a thriller but it isn't a thriller it's about queerness it's about so many different things about art and about culture and all these different things and the way he described it I was just like that sounds like a jewel box of a book of all these gorgeous different jewelry elements is this a bad analogy I don't know um, but yeah, basically it sold me, so there we go. The last two books that I've got here are both um, YA. And the first of which I saw on Sarah, Your True Shelf, I'll link her channel down below too, um, talking about as one of her favourite books of last year, and that was The Henna Wars by Adiba Jagadar. And since reading Life as a Unicorn by Amory Alcardi, I am really, really, really fascinated by um, religion versus sexuality. And I think this is going to be a really, really fascinating read from that perspective or for that perspective. I really, really loved, I want to read a bit more YA this year because I think that's where some of the most exciting writing can be happening. I really, really loved, although it was middle grade, not YA, uh, Me, My Dad and the End of the Rainbow. Um, and uh, yes, yeah, so I thought this would be a good one to head to after seeing Sarah recommend it. And it just sort of hitting certain um, points with where I want to take my reading over the forthcoming months. Now, another way that I want to take my reading over the forthcoming months is I would like to try and experiment with genres that I don't normally, and I might actually do a whole reading themed vlog on this at some point. And um, I thought actually, again, YA might be kind of an area where it's good for me to take those sort of tentative steps. And I believe this is um, fantasy, and it also riffs off a fairy tale, and I absolutely bloody love a fairy tale. And um, this is Cinderella is Dead by Kaylin Bayron. And I'm going to read you a bit of the blurb, which I don't normally do, but it's, this is what kind of grabbed me. Um, it's 200 years since Cinderella found her prince, but the fairy tale is over. Sophia knows her, the story through off by heart because every girl has to recite it daily from when she's tiny until the night she's sent to the royal ball for choosing. And every girl knows that she has only one chance for the lives of those not chosen by a man at the ball are forfeit. I'm really, really intrigued for this one. So there we go. Those are all the books that I got in in the second half of February, apart from the ones that I was very kindly gifted from my wish list for my birthday, which I'll talk about later in March. Let me know if you have read any of these or if these are any high on your TBR. If you didn't like them though, hold fire. Don't tell me about that until I have read them and then we can have a right old chat about it. It's just at the moment I'm super duper excited for these. And uh, yeah, I don't like it when, you know, when you start a book and then people just start chiming in. Oh, that was dreadful, that was dreadful. It absolutely just, takes the wind right out of your sails. On that note though, I'll go and I will speak to you all very soon. In fact, it will be on Sunday for Crime Time Live with me and Pip. I'll see you all soon. Bye.